version of the tech talk. From an agenda perspective, what we would be focusing on today is um, that is where the update part really comes in. We would actually be going through the installation aspects of things. So we had talked about what is required from a support perspective, et cetera, in our previous uh, session. We'll give you a detailed update in terms of what is covered, what the prerequisites order looks like. And uh, we also have an installation guide that which we will actually share them with you uh, as part of this uh, technical talk as well. We'll talk about some of the changes and the updates that we have done around the configuration of the tool itself. We'll go through a concept of what is called as templates that which we have actually introduced. So these templates are sort of an accelerator that helps you to actually extract um, the information out of AX 2009 in a more pre-configured way um, so that you don't have to actually go through table by table to actually determine what needs to be migrated and how it needs to be mapped, et cetera. So we've done that work for you for everything that is standard about the product and we'll go through that aspect of it to see how we can actually help you accelerate the migration path. We'll also talk about what is involved in actually migrating your customization specific information and what you would have to do it from a Dynamics 365 for operations mm -hmm. standpoint in order for you to be able to actually realize your customization specific data exported and migrated from 2009 to Dynamics 365 for operations. We'll also talk about incremental updates so that as you go and work on your implementation, you have an ability to be able to take the incremental data from Dynamics, sorry, from AX 2009 and import them into Dynamics 365 for operations. Towards the end, I'll touch upon what we are actually doing to facilitate more readiness set of activities using the workshops and the AMA group. I'll touch upon those and that would basically conclude the session for today. So that's sort of at a high level in terms of what we are looking at from an installation standpoint. There is not a lot of slides that which we have as part of today's session and predominantly we would be focusing on demos and we would actually be looking at both the AX2009 system as well as the Dynamic 365 for operations development environment as well as the application for us to be able to actually go through some of these concepts. Just from an installation standpoint, what we actually provide as part of the setup components is that there is actually uh, an executable that which um, will actually give you the data export import framework service as part of the 2009 installation itself. And we have a set of X++ forms um, that is provided as a patch that which allows you to actually configure what you would like to export from AX2009 and it actually creates what we refer to as a data package which is a consumable artifact from a Dynamic 365 for operations standpoint using the data management framework. We have a set of binaries that which you would actually copy to the respective client folders so that helps you um, with some of the dependencies that what we have. The last part is we also have a little patch that you would have to apply on the Dynamics 365 for operations standpoint. We'll talk about the prerequisites in terms of what is needed, etc. From a prereq standpoint, um, in the last technical talk um, when it happened, I had actually mentioned that the AX 2009 needs to be running with SQL 2012 or higher and we learned that since then using our customer engagements that predominantly the AX 2009 customers are still using SQL 2008 and have not upgraded their SQL. So we have backported the data export import service uh, to be able to support uh, SQL 2008 as well. So you do not have to upgrade your SQL database to 2012. You can run your AX 2009 with SQL Server 2008 or higher and it's supported all the way up to SQL Server 2016. We do have a dependency on Access Database Engine um, and this is primarily on the SQL box where you are actually running your AX2009 system. Um, it does not have to have the full-fledged office, it just needs to have the Access Database Engine so that when we use the integration services to export information from 2009, it actually uses this information to build the spreadsheets, etc. The last patch information that I have mentioned uh, about 
you need to apply a Dynamic 365 for Operations patch as well. So this patch is only applicable for Platform Update 4. And if you are running your Dynamic 365 for Operation with Platform Update 5 or higher, you do not need to apply this patch. So this is only required for Platform Update 4. And if you are in earlier versions of the platform, that is Platform Update 3 or 2, or the uh, initial version of the application, you do not have a patch. You have to upgrade at least to a minimum of Platform Update 4 for you to be able to actually consume this patch and to be able to have this 2009 tool interact with Dynamics 365 for operations. The sequence of things that what you would have to do from an installation perspective. So this is just a high level view in terms of what it is. There's a couple of things that I wanted to highlight. That's why I've called them out as bullets here. But we do have an installation document that we will actually share that with you as well, along with this deck that will actually give you pretty good detail in terms of step-by-step -step instructions of what I've highlighted here at a high level. So from an installation perspective, you can actually install the entire 2009 migration tool in a single box setup or a multi-box setup. And we have specific instructions in terms of what you would have to do from a single box and a multi-box setup perspective. I'll quickly show you a glimpse of the document as well so that you will have a perspective of what I'm talking about. So the first step that you would do is you would install the executable that allows you to actually have the data export import framework service running in 2009. So this would have to be done in a box where you are actually having your SQL uh, and the database for AX 2009 is running. And uh, in a multi-box, it is important because you install them on the SQL Server 1. Um, we've actually seen that um, the installation of this executable allows you to actually have the data export import framework service run as um, NT network service as the user to be able to start and stop the service because the DX web service is actually a Windows service. We've actually seen that customers struggle with not having the right set of privileges and hence the installation may not be able to complete because the service cannot be started. So whichever user that you provide, it does not have to be the network service, but if you do use the network service, make sure that it has the admin rights for it to be able to actually start and stop the service, which is not the case typically with some of the setup that people normally do. Or if you provide an, uh, another user, make sure that that user actually has the rights properly to be able to start and stop the service. The access database engine we already talked about, and uh, you would copy the binaries and this basically needs to go into the client bin uh, aspects of it. There is a prerequisite patch for AX 2009. We expect that from an AX 2009 standpoint, the minimum requirement is service pack one is installed and then this few additional set of things. If you don't have the few additional set of things on top of the service pack one, we have a prereq patch that allows you to actually get your code level to a level that what we are looking for. And then you can actually install the AX 2009X++ components patch that what we actually provide. On the Dynamics 365 side, if you are using platform update four, you need to apply the 365 for operations patch. If you are running update five or higher, you do not need to actually apply this patch. So I'm gonna quickly switch the window to actually show you the document as well. So this is the document that I was actually referring to. So this document actually has a pretty good detail in terms of um, what dependencies that you would have across each of those um, components that you're trying to install. It'll actually give you the links that what um, you would need and it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions in terms of what you need to go to. We will share this information as well in terms of uh, how to go about installing and configuring. It takes you all the way up to configuring um, your environment as well uh, to a pretty good detail. So that's um, available now. And uh, we've actually addressed a few more things based on the feedback around the setup. And that is one of the reasons as why I've called them out as part of the session. Before I go on to the demo aspects of things, I'm gonna pause for a second. Debbie, are there any questions? Yes, there are. So Tommy asks, does this require to be run using ENUS locale on formatting and version of access? So from a, from a 
language perspective, um, you know, we do not have any translation intent from a tool as it stands right now, but your AX 2009 system can actually uh, have um, any of those languages that what you have installed and that's perfectly fine and the tool will actually work for from that context. Great, thanks. That was the only question so far. So we'll actually focus on uh, the demo aspects of it, going through some of the advanced features that we've had. We will talk about, like I said, you know, setup updates, templates, customization, and incremental updates. So I'll start with the setup updates aspects of it. I'm going to switch to the AX2009 window. So what you see here, for the folks who are looking at this for the first time, um, what you see here is this is an AX2009 uh, system where I have actually installed the data migration tool. And what you see here is a responsibility or a, a menu area where we have the respective set of uh, forms that which you have to go and use from a configuration perspective as well as to actually define the intent of what you would like to export from AX2009 using those forms that what we have provided. At a very high level, um, you will actually select which companies you would want to migrate by selecting the migrate company list. Then you would actually go about configuring like any other application. You have parameters for this application as well, and it allows you to actually define um, a set of parameters that describe how you would like to use the tool itself. Then we actually have a set of forms that allows you to actually configure the conceptual changes from AX 2009 to Dynamic 365 for operations. And these are not changes that were introduced between 2009 to Dynamic 365 for operations. These are some of the changes that have happened even with AX 2012, which got carried forward to Dynamic 365 for operations. So an ability for you to be able to migrate financial dimensions, an ability for you to be able to migrate inventory dimensions as how you would like to configure inventory dimensions by company, an ability for you to be able to actually configure chart of accounts because we give you an ability to be able to create account structures and share your chart of accounts instead of actually having a dedicated chart of accounts for each company, as well as configure ledger, which is uh, the combination of chart of accounts, calendar, and a currency that gets associated with a legal entity to help manage the accounting definitions of how you would like to account uh, any transactions that is created in a legal entity. So these are some other conceptual changes that has happened between AX 2009 and 2012. And we're giving you a way for you to be able to specify how you would like to migrate as part of the configuration itself. So once you've done these two, then you would actually go in and define which set of entities that you would want to actually migrate. From a 2009 perspective, there are no data entities and you would only have uh, your source tables and those are basically the standard tables or the customized tables that what you may have added as part of your implementation. So that's on the source side and on the target side, we map this to the data export import framework or the data management frameworks, staging table representation of the data entity. So we map that uh, and we provide you with an out of the box mapping as well. And we'll go through some of those as part of the session. And then you can actually define migration groups and export module by module or a specific functional area by functional area, which we will actually see as part of uh, today's demo as well. So that's in a nutshell in terms of what we actually do. I cover these to a pretty good detail in my first version of the tech talk. Uh, if you are attending this session for the first time, I'll highly recommend that you go back and look at the first version of the tech talk and then connect them with this part of the presentation. To start with, to actually talk about the setup updates and steps. So one of the things that what we actually provide as part of the setup is a default query spreadsheet. The purpose of the default query spreadsheet is to actually provide you with an initial mapping for everything that we ship out of the box from the source table to the target entity mapping. We also give you an ability for you to be able to provide some source queries and to manage some of the data model differences between AX 2009 and Dynamic 365 for operations. So it actually covers a comprehensive set of changes from AX 2009 and Dynamic 365 for operations. 
So that spreadsheet is what you would provide as an input, and then you would generate maps. And a generate maps basically takes the information from your 2009, and it also uses the information that what you specified as where your Dynamic 365 for operation instances makes a connection, and then it reads the metadata from that system, and it does the mapping for you. We did not have the UI capability to be able to actually show that information to you in terms of what the default mapping would result into. So now we have a UI that basically shows you what that mapping is going to look like. So you would basically be able to see by module what is the source table, and this will actually show you both the standard tables as well as if you have custom tables, this will actually show you. From a, from a target perspective that is on the Dynamic 365 for operations, you will actually be able to see what is the corresponding uh, entity that which this source table is mapped to. So this is the information that we provide out of the box for you. We also seed with some of these things with an out of the box query. If you don't provide a source query, what we do is we just extract all columns from the source table and then prepare the necessary Excel file or a CSV file or an XML file, depending on the format that you want to export, and map that to the target entity, depending on the metadata that what we are able to actually get based on the sandbox environment that you point to this tool as where your Dynamics 365 for operations is. And if you do want to actually modify instead of selecting all the columns or you want to apply filters and stuff, you can actually provide a source query as part of your extraction. And this source query actually takes the form as um, an ANSI SQL and not the X++ syntax of the SQL. So that gives you a, a world of opportunities for you to be able to write complex SQLs if you were to. So there's a couple of other things that I want to highlight is that, for example, if you take number sequences in AX2009, they are predominantly uh, company specific in a way as how the number sequence definition is. In Dynamic 365 for operations, number sequence have actually changed to be not a company specific table. That means it's not Stripe by data area ID. It is actually a shared table that is available for the whole instance across companies. And it carries a specific set of fields that differentiates whether the scope is for the entire system or the scope is for a particular data entity. When you do export information from 2009, you do not have that information. So we have provisions for you to be able to add pseudo columns in this so that you can actually extract that information and provide some of the defaults in terms of saying, this particular number sequence that I'm actually exporting is for this legal entity. So make sure that you populate the number sequence definitions with the right scope on the target site. So that's just an example in terms of how you can actually provide some defaults like that. So if you see the definition for number sequence table, you can actually see that the number sequence table entity. And then when I go look at the field mapping, you will actually be able to actually see the relevant fields in terms of, but you can also see this concept called default values. And we look at the default values, it will actually show you there is a scope type and the scope type for the number sequences that are coming in from 2009 will always be data area because all number sequences in 2009 are uh, company specific. And that is why, but this information is not there in 2009. We were able to actually define a pseudo column that allows you to actually specify some of these defaults if you were to. And these are seeded out of the box with values like CEU. This is basically like a demo data company, but you would change this to your company or your legal entity so that this will actually default to the appropriate values for yours. And if you have more than one, you actually define migration groups for each of these things by company. So you can actually override these values as part of your migration groups. So each migration group will be targeting to loading the number sequence setup for that particular legal entity for which the migration group is set up with. So that is a nice change so that it allows you to actually manage data model differences um, between um, 2009 to Dynamic 365 for operations in a way as how it is. And you should be able to do the same with your custom tables as well if um, there is, but this is predominantly applicable for uh, the standard tables 
where there are data model differences. And it's just to highlight to you how to go about using some of these default fields uh, and stuff. So that's the key information that I wanted to share with regards to the setup. Before I go into the templates aspects of things, I wanted to pause. Debbie, are there any questions so far? Yes, indeed. We just have one here from Patrick. When we talk about the data migration tool, are we then talking about only data migration or also code migration? Very good question. So we are only talking about code migration here. We're not talking about, uh, sorry, we're only talking about data migration, I apologize, and not the code migration. And the way as how we recommend that you do the code migration is predominantly manual. And the primary reason for that is because since the 2009, um, we've actually transformed the product quite a bit, both in terms of the functional aspects as well as on the platform from a technical st architecture standpoint between 2009 to Dynamic 365 for operations. One of the things that we recommend that you go through as part of your implementation is the analysis phase where we definitely want you to look at the functional advancements that have gone, that have gone in into the product from 2009 to see if any of those things that you would want to carry forward or whichever ones that you don't need to actually obsolete them as part of the source itself and then go through this. From a code migration perspective, you would have to actually bring those changes manually for now. We're looking at providing a tooling around those as well, but we don't have that tooling yet. Uh, and that is one of the things that we'll actually announce uh, once we have some of those design approaches in terms of what we would like to do from that code migration tool perspective is solidified. We'll do a similar tech talk to actually announce that aspect as well. So everything that we talk about this tool right now is only pertaining to data and it has nothing to do with the code. And if you have to use this today as a customer or if you are a partner working with a customer from a 2009 standpoint in, in looking into Dynamic 365, the code migration activity would have to be a manual effort. Great, thanks Manoj. So we've got a couple more questions. Uh, this one sure. from Tommy. When are the mapping values seeded? Is there an initialization step or are they seeded on the first export slash run? So the, the mapping value specifically, um, you know, so I'll actually show that information as well. So we actually ship an out of the box mapping for every um, out of the box tables with the data entity. And we also map the source to the target fields as well, and which is exactly what you saw as part of uh, the ones that which I showed you. The initial mapping happens because when you do install the setup, all of this information would be blank. You would actually provide the default source query spreadsheet that what we provide that allows you to actually get you a head start in terms of out of the box tables map to the data entity from the out of the box perspective, but you can also have your customizations. And the only way is how we do the initial mapping of the fields and the tables to the entity happens through this process called generate maps. So one of the steps that after providing all of these values is where your 2009 set of configurations and after you specifying where your Dynamic 365 for operations is, the system will tell you that now you are ready to actually go in and do a generate maps. And when you do this process, this is when the first um, mapping of those fields are happening. And there are additional things that's in terms of when you can, how you can actually do the incremental mappings. And I'll talk about that and I'll show that experience as well in a bit. Great, and then we've got one other comment here from Tommy again. If SQL login is the only way to connect to the source, then a prerequisite must be allowing mixed authentication on SQL Server. It should be noted that this requires a restart of the SQL Server engine if it is not enabled on the instance. That is an absolute, uh, absolutely the right information and a good observation as well. Um, so this is primarily required because the data export import framework service uses the SQL Server integration services for us to be able to actually export. And this is required from that perspective for us to be able to, and uh, that is absolutely correct. It needs to be in a mixed mode for us to be able to actually use that and not the domain basis of actually connecting. So that is correct. And 
if it is not set up, that needs to be changed so that we can actually do it. But one thing, uh, you can actually go in and add uh, a user, but all we actually look for is actually a user that actually has admin privileges so that the SSIS can actually use this connection information to actually go in and do that. But that's predominantly the requirement uh, from the SQL credential standpoint. Great, thanks. That's all the questions for now. Thank you. So that was what I wanted to cover from a setup perspective. Now I wanted to actually show you the template capabilities that what we have added. So from a temp to showcase the template capabilities, I'll go into the entity list. So just a little bit of information on what this entity list is. This is where predominantly you would actually be spending the migration definitions. Let me just get to the screen. So this is where you will actually spend most of your time in terms of defining what your configurations are um, that you would want to actually migrate, um, et cetera. So what it actually shows you is um, by different areas, um, you know, whatever ones that are the source tables and the corresponding target entities. And from this point onwards, you can actually go in and define which ones that you want to actually select to export that information from 2009. And um, you have an ability to be able to group a bunch of these things and have them as one migration group that you would want to. We provide some bit of grouping that is what you see on the left hand side, but you are not confined to actually go in and use that set of grouping and you can actually customize this and that is exactly what you would actually do from the screen. So there's various controls that what we offer as part of these things and I walk through a good portion of these controls as part of my initial tech talk, which I will not be focusing on as this part of this session and we'll focus on some of the, these two as part of the today's demo. But from a template perspective to start with, right? So let me go ahead and discover the whole thing. So. What this allows you to um, actually do is this automatically identifies the out of the box ones that are considered for migration and it will automatically mark them as considered for migration. And from at that point in time, you can actually go in and um, determines how you would want to actually define um, your specific set of um, tables that you would want to migrate and then group them in any order um, as how you would want it. This process is something uh, that you would do once, uh, but you can actually repeat this process as many times as you would want. Um, you can actually reset your groupings if you didn't get it right. Um, and it is just a mechanism for us to be able to highlight. But what it basically does is it basically goes and reads pretty much all the tables information in your system and it uses the mapping information. It generates a bunch of information, which is what um, it's doing right now. And I'll show you what it does as well. So if it finds any table that actually has a record, and if there is a table that what we have actually considered, um, that we have actually enabled out of the box from a migration perspective, which you can actually see here, uh, the ones that is considered for migration. And this is the process that it does. And then for any table that actually has records on the source for this company, it would actually go ahead and mark. Now you can actually go in and select a particular table by table if you would want by selecting the select for migration. Instead, you can also use the template that what we provide out of the box. So what does the template mean? So right for a given company, if you go in and look at here, we actually have a list of uh, migration groups predefined for you with a suffix for the company that what you actually have. But what it is, is if you look into this, it actually has initial setup, um, journals, the whole bunch of different product areas if you were to. So let's just pick initial setup, for example, and it actually have a package name. And if you just look at what's active from the perspective, so the initial setup automatically uh, is about these three set of tables uh, from a source perspective and it actually takes this information and uh, 
selects that for migration and at this point in time what you can actually do is um, you can just go about creating a migration group and we've already done the necessary sequencing in terms of how we would want to so it actually does the initial setup so likewise we have a comprehensive set of templates that we have provided across the 2009 product that helps you to extract the relevant data from the 2009 system and export them as a package for you out of the box. So this is primarily as you as a customer coming in new from 2009 and you are working with a partner and you haven't done much on the Dynamic 365 for operation side in terms of the data entity or the data package stuff. This is the template that which we recommend that you use because it will give you a pretty good head start. And we have that from a coverage perspective for a good portion of the product and we'll continue to uh, add more templates to this. So why this is relevant and how this can actually help is because one, it is very hard to actually understand every bit of the data model from a 2009 standpoint and know all the relations and know all the dependencies for you to be able to actually go in and um, determine which ones need to be done first and how you would actually group those things together based on the relationships so that when you load that information by exporting that data, it doesn't actually fail on the target site, right? So that is why this template is super useful. And even within these set of groupings that what we have actually done, it is quite possible that you could get this wrong because you don't know in what order it needs to be. We will actually, right now this is sorted based on the alphabetical order. We will actually provide somewhat of a similar information as what I have in this slide. This is the sequence in terms of what we actually recommend. So you can actually start with the initial setup, sysadmin, that gives you an ability for you to be able to export number sequences, user setup, etc. Then you go into the application modules like GL, vendor setup, accounts payable, accounts receivable, etc. So it actually goes into the sequence in terms of what it is. We'll actually show the sequence for you in those templates as well, and that's an enhancement that's coming in. But we will share this information with you so you know exactly in which order you need to be able to actually export and load this information onto the target side of things. So very useful feature that helps you to gain some accelerated set of migration capability to extract the information and you could potentially include your custom tables as well as part of this and that gives you an ability to be able to take relevant information including your customizations as part of these packages to be exported out of 2009 and imported into Dynamic 65 for operations. So that is, um, let me go back to the 2009 screen. So that is the key piece about the template. So you will use this template if you have not invested time in actually building data packages on the Dynamic 365 for operations side. So some partners have done investments based on their experience with working with the customers in Dynamic 365 for operations. We've seen that they've invested time in actually building these packages on the Dynamic 365 for operations to help customers configure fairly quickly and easily. If you have done that, you can take that same investment and use that as the basis to define which tables and what way you would want it to group those source tables export. So in order to do that, instead of using these templates that what we provide within the 2009, you have an ability to be able to import package. So when you do this, this actually takes input as a data package that's defined in Dynamic 365 as an input. And based on the definition of those data entities included in the package, it'll go and identify the corresponding source tables and select all those source tables as the selected for migration automatically for you. So two modes of templates. One is if you have never invested time or if you're coming in fresh, both as a partner and as a customer to Dynamic 365 for operations and you're trying to migrate, you can use the template capabilities that what we've actually provided here and determine which set of groupings that is applicable for you based on your implementation and then use. If all of them are applicable, you can actually use that initial set of grouping that we've done to get a head start in terms of 
selecting the different set of tables from the source system. And it'll automatically have the mappings and the uh, both the table to entity as well as the fields information mapped. And you can actually review them and make changes as well if you would want to, but it gives you a head start in terms of identifying those grouping. And then you can actually export that and import them into Dynamic 65 for operations. This is a case where if you have not invested time in building data packages on Dynamic 65, but if you did do that, then you do not have to use this template capability because that definition already exists in your other package definition. You can import that package and have us use this, uh, use that information to actually create uh, the migration groups for you. So those are the two modes from a template perspective. So one of the things that I also wanted to highlight is, it is great that it can actually do these set of mappings for the source table and the target entities, but typical thing that you would want to know is what is the coverage and how much does it help me from an initial out of the box solution perspective? How much is actually not covered so that I need to go do something about it, right? So that question comes up all the time. And if you do have that aspect of it, right? So there is a tab called entity coverage that which we have. And if you go and look into this one, so since this will actually tell you by module area, what are the source tables that are by default considered for migration? And in the context of what's considered for migration, how many of them have target data entity defined? So these are data entities that are shipped out of the box. With Dynamic 365 for operations, we've actually done about 1700 or so at the initial release and that number is growing as we speak and we're close to about 2000 set of data entities that we would actually have by the end of the spring release that's gonna come around the July timeframe. So, but still there is not comprehensive from a product perspective and you will find some gaps in terms of the coverage. And if you do find that, you can actually log a request so that we will actually go in and create the data entity for you and then ship and then share the data entity with you for anything that is a standard product data entity uh, that is missing. If it is your custom table and stuff, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but you would have to actually do this. But this gives you a head start in terms of understanding the ones that are by default considered for migration, you can actually see. So in this case, for example, production, there's about nine tables that are considered, but we only have one entity um, from this perspective, and that percentage is actually fairly weak. And anything that's 50 and above, we feel it's okay, but if it's not, because the focus for migration using this tool is set up configuration master data, the open transaction and the opening balances only. So that's why you will never see 100% uh, from the perspective of uh, every table. The tables coverage that what we are looking for here is only the tables pertaining to set up configuration master data, open transaction and opening balances only. So projects, for example, may have significant set of other tables that what it might have, but the ones that are considered for migration is fairly limited and we have data entities for those and hence you would see this thing, but it might have other tables too. If you use those tables and you wanna use them for migration and if you don't have data entities, if it's standard, log across to us if it's non, if it is a custom one, you need to actually create the data entity. So this gives you a pretty good view in terms of what it is. And when you look at an entity coverage, the entity coverage will actually show you the source table to the target entity and the uncovered entity list will actually tell you the ones that which you need to actually make sure that you have data entity for those. If you use any of these tables and you need them to be migrated, which we obviously don't have the data entity, please log a request and we're just prioritizing this based on the customer needs and we will actually provide that information for you. So those are the things that I wanted to highlight from uh, the template perspective. Before I take questions on this, I wanted to talk about two uh, set of things and then I'll pause for the questions. The next thing that I wanted to talk about it is around the customizations. If you have customizations that you have like extended the table 
the extended standard table in 2009 or if you've created net new tables in 2009 that you want to actually migrate the relevant data pertaining to that as well using this tool there are a bunch of steps that you need to do on dynamic 365 for operation side so i'll show that information to you so what i'm actually showing you is uh, a dynamic 365 for operations development environment so we do that using the visual studio which you may already be familiar with so the scenario that i wanted to use for the demonstration is i have extended the vendor group table by adding a simple column called my name so and i've done that so that basically means you've made this change in 2009 system to realize the change in dynamic 365 for operations this is the vendor group table i'm extending that table by adding that name field you also have to make sure that you modify the data entities as well. So the vendor group entity, the data sources has to have the extended column and the data source field, sorry, the entity fields will also have to have the new column that what you've actually added. It's just not the entity, but also the staging representation should have this as well. And, um, we actually have a tool that helps you to actually get these things done um, as a project for you and we'll share that information about the tool as well because um, it's actually one column into three different steps and we have this um, automated as well so that you can use that to build this thing for you that will give you a head start from a development perspective once we have actually uh, done this thing, you would compile and synchronize. So that is predominantly the development work that you have to do. So once again, you would modify the table, add the extra columns. You would modify the entity to add the additional columns, both on the data source and on the fields. You would actually have to modify the staging representation to make sure that those fields are there, compile and synchronize. So once you have this done, then the next thing that what you would have to do is you need to make sure that once you've deployed this change, which is basically through the compile synchronize, on that deployed environment, you would actually go to the data management framework in the data entities uh, screen. You would actually go in and query your entity, which is what I have here. There's two more things that you need to make sure. One is you need to make sure that the target fields has your custom field that what you've actually done. And because the original mapping that we ship out of the box between the staging to the target would not have it, the target mappings would have to be modified. So it knows that to include the new column as well, so that the staging to the target understands the customizations that you have done um, is also included as part of that entity. So these are the five steps that you need to do. So once you have done these five steps, so there was a question initially as well to say, how do you do this um, field mapping? So once you've done these five steps, you would actually go back to your 2009 system. You need to refresh or tell the 2009 system that there is a customization that needs to be mapped as well. And the way is how you do this, one way is you can do this using the generate maps and you can do this generate maps as many times as you would want. The only thing is generate map does it for the whole system and it does not do an incremental one. So something that you want to keep in mind. So if you have modified any settings and stuff, this generate maps would actually overwrite. So that's why we recommend that you do the generate maps as part of initially configuring the system and then don't do them afterwards for any of those incremental changes. But to get the incremental changes, we have a button called Delta Schema Update as part of your entity list itself. And you can actually go in and use that Delta Schema Update. And this will actually do the incremental update for you um, so that it will realize those changes both in terms of the net new tables as well as any field additions that what you've actually done for which you've modified the entities and stuff on the Dynamic 65 for operations. It will bring that definition and do the mappings with the source table and the source table fields for you. So Delta Schema Update is used for incremental updates specifically for that. So incremental data model changes so that you can actually synchronize that information between Dynamic 65 for operations and AX2009 too. So that's the purpose and those are the steps that you need to do so that you can realize your customization and export data pertaining to your customizations as well along with the standard fields 
to actually export that information and import it. So that is the purpose for the Delta schema update. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is incremental, up, uh, incremental exports. The incremental exports um, is what that means is you start your implementation for 2009 to Dynamics 365 for operation. That is a journey in its itself and it would have its own set of timeline in terms of how you would start, go through the analysis and all the way up to go live in terms of doing the cutover from 2009 to Dynamic 365 for operations. In that span of time, you would be continuing to use your 2009 system from a production standpoint to run your business. So that's very normal. So you do these extract for, let's say, for example, the initial setup that you see here, and then you go and make changes to the number sequence table. So that incremental change that what you've done in 2009 has to be exported and imported into Dynamics 65 for operations as well, so that you don't incur the loss of information that has changed in your 2009 during the course of the implementation. So how do you do that? You do that with the capability called Delta Run. And the way as how we do this is we need to track the changes that happened in 2009. We do not use the SQL change tracking feature. What we actually do is we, we use the modified date time as a mechanism for us to be able to act, export the information or track the information about the changes and export them as part of the incremental runs. <clears throat> One question that I normally get is, you know, we don't have modified date time enabled for all tables. And if we don't have that enabled, what should we do? So that is where the Delta Run options really comes into play. So when you have um, a package of this sort, you can actually create a migration group. And when you create a migration group, we give you an option called Enable Entities for Delta. This checkbox, what it does is, it goes and looks at every table that is included in this migration group and it checks to see if modified date time is enabled. If modified date time is not enabled, this checkbox, as you select, does the creation of modified date time in those tables as part of this exercise, and it creates the migration group for you. Because adding modified date time is a data model change, you have to compile and synchronize for that change to be realized. And we'd give you this as a convenience feature so that you don't have to actually go look at table by table. All you do is just enable this and we will go and create the modified date time fields if it's missing. And that in itself is enabling the change so that we can track the changes. And hence, when you do the export, we will actually uh, export the differences based on the previous run that what you've actually done. So that in and itself is what uh, we actually do. If you want to do this for a particular table that you know it does not have, you can just select that particular table and say enable Delta Run, and this also does the same uh, aspects of it. So just to kind of recap, we use modified date time as a means to track the changes in the data from 2009 to the uh, Dynamic 65. So in order for us to be able to do that, we need to have that enabled. And if you don't have that enabled, we give you two means by which you can enable the modified date time outside of you going in and directly modifying that from the uh, application object tree or the AOT. So all three ways are supported. You can use these convenience, but if you use either of these, keep in mind that it is a data model change that happens to realize that change in, in all the, not just on your AOT, but also on the database and stuff, you need to actually uh, compile and synchronize. And once you do that, we will be able to actually start tracking the uh, changes and hence um, <clears throat> we will be able to support the incremental updates extract and import them on the target set. So those are the set of things that I wanted to talk about in terms of the feature specifically.
we continue to actually provide more set of readiness, uh, set of capabilities uh, for you to be able to get yourself comfortable. So for that, we've actually started doing workshops. We have successfully done four set of workshops across um, the Americas and the um, Europe. Uh, we will continue to do more as part of this calendar year. And our plan is to actually do, <coughs> excuse me, do it worldwide. And uh, we will publish the schedule as part of um, all the standard channels that where we actually publish these workshops and the seminar type stuff. We also have a Yama group where we have the participants of these workshops added to this Yama group so that people can actually ask questions and stuff. We're still in the preview stages of this tool and we have not made this publicly available. And the means is how you can actually access them is predominantly through workshops um, as a means. And what we do in these workshops is to have you bring your own database of 2009 system and then have you install the tool, configure in the context of your system and go through the migration experience um, in the two days that a workshop exercise end to end. We also do the exact steps that what I showed you in terms of actually doing the data model changes from a customization standpoint on Dynamics 65 for operations and how to realize your customizations data flow through as well from AX2009 to Dynamics 65 for operations. So if you would like to and if you are currently having a customer or if you are a 2009 customer, trying to go do this and you have not participated in the workshop and you would like to in one of these workshop sessions that what we do, please send me a note. I have my email address as part of the session deck as well. So please send me an email. I'll connect you with the folks and have you register for these sessions. And these are completely funded by the R&D. We do not charge anything for this um, set of workshop. So with that, um, I'm done with my session. I'll open it up for a few questions and I'll pass it over to Debbie after answering those questions. So Debbie, are there more questions? Great, thanks Manoj. No, at the moment there aren't. Folks, uh, please do, uh, if you have any questions, type them into your messages window and uh, we'd be able to get to them. Uh, while we're waiting for those final questions, I would like to call your attention to the survey link that I posted in the messages window. Your feedback is very valuable to us. We hope that you click that link, uh, enter your email, you'll be taken into the survey. There's five questions in our voting scales on a scale of one to five, with five being the best score possible. Be sure to click on the submit button at the bottom to ensure that your feedback has been received. And with that, uh, Manoj, it looks like we're good on the questions. Any final remarks here before we close today's event? Perfect, so I think like I mentioned, um, this particular tool in it is in its preview stage as we speak and hence um, we, are not publicly uh, providing the access to this tool and we wanted it to be in a controlled way, etc. Our intent is to actually realize good set of customer success before we make this thing publicly available. And to that effect, we're actually working with every single customer who is actually uh, trying to use this uh, tool from the migration perspective. Our goal is to have some customer success realized for us to be comfortable by the spring release time frame to see if we could have the opportunity to make this more broadly available as well. So with that, um, you know, you can reach out to me for any questions or 